right? So, you know, I have another question for you. And this is going to be a little bit uh, more um, uh, challenging, right? So, you know, with regards to housing, it's not just about purchasing. There is also another aspect of um, housing, which is actually renting, right? Because not now these days, right, there's a lot more millennials who actually would prefer to kind of rent the houses instead. So, you know, this is what I'm hearing from a lot of people, right? Maybe they have a partner uh, and they want to like rent together or perhaps to me, they want to be independent, right? They want to move out, um, you know, and be like uh, more like those people in Western countries whereby they move out younger and then rent and, you know, get their own space and things like that. So, you know, is renting truly a waste of money, right? Guys, so if you look at my PowerPoint slide, I'm going to show you something very interesting. Are you looking for an honest agent to buy, sell or rent your properties? Contact us at IPA in the description below. So this is something that one of the readers actually shared with me. If you think about it, there is this is a condo of sorts called Urban Lofts, okay? Urban Lofts monthly rental for a one-bedroom is 2003, right? And to buy Urban Lofts is 850000 for the say, uh, a similar size um, house. So if you think about it, right, you look at the mortgage uh, for buying, the mortgage for buying, 2.3k and then the rental also 2.3k so my reader was asking me then doesn't it make more sense to buy instead of rent urban loss correct and if i were to just show you another example that the reader also sent to me uh, prior to this conversation she also highlighted the uh, example of sturdy residences correct so rather than you know um purchase uh, rather than rent sturdy residences which will cost four thousand per month why don't she buy study residences and just pay 4.7 as a mortgage? The difference is just 713. So Suyang, what do you have to say to this particular reader who is sharing with me all these different statistics? Let me let you take over by muting myself. Uh, so we are looking at the steady state, meaning you have um, acquired and you are paying your monthly mortgages and the argument to support purchase is quite clear. I don't have to take out so much cash. And with the 4,700 that I pay, um, you can see that uh, the orange or yellow portion is actually payment towards principal. When I pay towards principal, I'm contributing to myself. So in fact, my net outflow is 2,100. So that, that goes the, the long time argument. And that's why, uh, 30 years ago when I bought, uh, well, 20 years ago when I bought my own property, I I was sort of gullible enough to also believe this uh, set of mathematics. Uh. But uh, it, it is actually not exactly this way. So, okay, let's look at this blue part of the chart again. You, you are paying uh, $2,000 of uh, interest. And that goes to the bank. And uh, the other part, yes, it does go contribute to a principal, meaning that you are building up more and more ownership in your own home, right? But your monthly payment as an owner uh, hasn't included your expenses of uh, the monthly maintenance fees as well as your property tax. So to own your property is actually a little bit more expensive. Then the other argument that young couples always have would be, um, but I can. For ownership rather than rental, for rental, I've got to take out full cash. For ownership, we can use our combined CPF to pay the monthly, right? Yes, but that is at the expense of your future retirement, which today, as an older person I'm, and planning my own retirement, I'm starting to regret because over the last 20-something years that I've owned my property continuously, I have failed to earn hundred thousand dollars of cpf 2.5 percent every year for the last 20 over years the loss of the cpf money um in fact reduces my ability to have a more um, comfortable retirement so geraldine just moved to the this slide to, to to show you don't forget the hidden cost so I'm saying that the slide that we saw just now about the $4,700 monthly payment, that's the steady state, right? Which is after you have acquired. But what about the cash that is required to buy? 
there is acquisition cost. Acquisition cost in the form of stamp duty, even for a property that is less than uh, $1 million, the stamp duty formula is 3% minus $5,400. That may cost you, say, $20,000 as a stamp duty. That $20,000 is a cost that we don't count. That $20,000 is actually equal already to five months of rental. And we haven't, so I say that most of us have forgotten to count that there is a, there is a, opportunity cost of not earning the 2.5% and allowing that 2.5% to compound itself within the CPF uh, system. And therefore, it hurts you later on when you are planning for your retirement, just like it's hurting me now. And my realization came um, very late. So I'm hoping that younger people today, especially you guys are a lot more well-educated than me, you are able to plan forward and do your sums more carefully. So please be strict with yourself. Rentals have got a certain cost. The total cost of ownership is yet another set of numbers. So be very strict, work out the numbers and see what you can afford. Um, there was a question from Preston who, who is asking, so does it mean that we are concluding that we should never buy, just don't buy properties, or basically don't buy anything? No, that, that's not true. So please move on to the next slide um i i'm not suggesting that we don't buy i'm suggesting that we buy only when we are ready um uh, just now that slide was uh, saying that uh, millennials actually have a propensity they to to actually do home sharing or to rent um in the us this is a lot more prevalent because millennials are saddled with a lot more um education debt in Singapore, education debt is not so much a problem, but you guys have graduated into a market where real estate is a lot more expensive. Um, HDB flats in the last 15 years have actually more than doubled uh, in terms of its resale prices, despite the fact that some old HDB flats are uh, seeing declines in the last five years. But compared to 15 years ago, pre Lehman days, um, HDB flat prices are still very expensive. So many millennials are in fact having no choice especially in the us in europe where they have to go the rental route but in singapore thank god we do have a choice so this is why i want all of you to just be, be just be aware of what your choices are and purchase is not the single choice that you have so next slide please i wanted to share that yes we can still buy but Let's buy with a lot more prudence and a lot more caution. So if you do want to buy, assuming that your property is worth $100, my suggestion is you should be um, between you and your spouse or if you were single. Uh, sorry, you, you guys might think that I'm giving you a tall order. But between you and your spouse or if you were single and you wanted to buy a condo for yourself, um, or you wanted to buy a resale HDB if you're past 35 years old, you should save up at least 60 of capital. If the property is worth 100, you should have at least 60 in your pockets. So, out of the six. Wait, Suyong, so this means that if it's 1 million condo, they should at least have 600k combined if they yeah. are a couple or by themselves if yeah. they are single in cash yes. and cpf so Ooh. many people call me too conservative but uh, i've got good reasons for this because again again taking a leaf out of some of my own experiences and perhaps my own regrets plus also as a property agent i have been um, in consultation with many clients including clients that are worth over uh, nine digits um, so my explanation is if you can save up sufficiently to have 60% of the property value, then, next click please, then you should apply a fraction of your capital, for example, in this order where you use 20 cash, you use 10 CPF, and then you, sorry, 20 cash and 15 CPF, and then you borrow. 
from the bank. One more click. Which means that you are left with 10 cash and 15 CPF. This 15 CPF continues to earn you 2.5%. This 15 CPF that is earning you the 2.5% helps you by the time you reach 55, you will be very happy with yourself because you have met your uh, retirement sum, minimum sum account, right? And when you're 65, you will be even more happy with yourself because you have a lot more CPF to, to pull out and enjoy your retirement. It rolls. But another reason for asking you to uh, retain this level of um, uh, reserves, next slide please, is these reserves can help you build up your financial nest egg. Of course, if you haven't, prior to buying this property, as you are trying to build up towards the 30 CPF and 30 cash, you are also investing, well, Please do not be lazy. Please put some of the money to work. Uh, could be in uh, funds, could be locked up in five-year bonds, for example. Get your money working such that you're amassing more wealth. Then you are saving up more. And by the time you save up to this 30 cash and 30 CPF, then you buy your property, but still retain sufficient reserves and continue to invest. Your CPF will automatically pay you 2.5% if you don't take out any to be put into, say, the equities market or the ETFs or, or funds, right? Wait, wait uh, Suyong, sorry to interrupt you, but we have quite a lot of questions. Your CPF are a very interesting and hot topic for many of my generation. So let's just quickly get some clarification first. So Kit, hello Kit, thanks for asking your question. Kit actually asked, you know, when you mentioned the 30 CPF, is it does OA or are you talking about combined CPF? I'm, I'm talking about OA actually, uh, mm. because the S, SA and the MediSafe, um, in, in the beginning, SA and MediSafe would be very low anyway for the, all the younger people. Secondly, they are untouchable. So I'm talking about the part that is touchable for investments, which includes mm. your home and includes um, stock uh, approved stocks, for example. Uh, if you could show the next full slide. Next slide is actually advice for millennials. He, okay, okay. I, I, I'm linking all of them up together. My, uh, my reason for asking you to keep so much reserves are many. Look, we are in the gig economy and tech is moving, whether it is biotech, sensors, big data, whether you are comm science, even mechanical uh, engineers. There is advanced manufacturing. There's... Uh, and even sociologists and psychologists. These days, very large tech companies also bring in sociologists and psychologists for market analysis. So imagine if, now the last bullet point, imagine if Elon Musk came to offer you a job. He wanted to start up a new startup in Singapore and he makes you Singapore shareholder, gives you a ton of stock options, but he's only going to pay two thousand dollars a month until the until the venture takes off would you be able to walk away from your seven to eight thousand dollar job to take on elon musk's uh, proposal and help him build his singapore startup you can't be using your stock options to pay for your uh, flats or your condo right and then for those of you whose careers are even better subsequently hey there's a Harvard MBA that I'm qualified to do. Um, would you be able to walk away from your home loan, walk away from your job, spend two years in Harvard and get that prestigious MBA that is going to cost you $400,000 all in? So if, if you had that reserves that is uh, in the picture just now, those reserves can in fact allow you to quit your job and your home loan repayment would still be able to go on for two years at least. So my suggestion, the second last bullet point is keep 24 months of uh, home loan payments in your bank accounts and in your CPF such that you actually have the bandwidth or you have got the leeway of uh, even whether it's Elon Musk, whether it's Harvard University 
or if you are happen to be reporting to a toxic boss, you can tell him to shove it, man. Right? So I, I'm suggesting that yes, we can buy, but do not buy from a very stretched position. Invest your cash wisely first, build up the financial wealth. Then when you do invest, yes, still pick up some loan. Uh, Two thirds of it is a good rule of thumb. Then with the reserves, it makes your life a lot less encumbered. Because I felt shackled 20 years ago when I was uh, in this situation. I think um, people shouldn't be beholden to, to holding on a job that they feel sucks, that they, they don't find meaning in, and they can't walk away from that job or they can't jump into a new startup that is very exciting simply because of that home loan that is tying them down. Again, these are not uh, prescriptive for everybody because it depends then on at that life stage. Are you planning to have your second child or are you planning to have your first child? Or maybe you're welcoming triplets. So uh, it, it will differ for everybody. And of course, if your parents and your spouse's parents also have a lot of reserves and you are a lot more comfortable, then uh, some of my um, uh, statements may not hold uh, so much water for you. Mm, Suyong, so what, basically what you are suggesting for millennials, right? I mean, the reason why you actually show us you know, this really uh, more conservative uh, estimate, right, at first, is that the rationale behind this would basically be first of all uh, because you know you foresee this in this uh, current economy jobs are not so stable um, due to technological disruptions um, and other trends that are happening in the wider world so you don't want to be in a situation whereby you have to pay mortgage and then you don't have enough to tie yourself through uh, unemployment as well. I think we saw, we see that happening, right? I mean, I read this article about some SIA pilots who actually um, spent a lot on property and then when it came to, um, you know, this COVID situation, they couldn't really pay back their loans. So that was an article that I read as well. And this is very true. Um, on top of that, you know, you, you also propose, right, you know, having all these you know, what your estimate is 24 months worth of CPF and cash to cover the home loan. That means to say, like, if your home loan is $1,000, then you need 24000 in CPF and cash. Is that what you're saying, Suyo? Yes, correct. Yeah, correct. So the idea of why you promote this is because it gives people freedom. It gives them the freedom to walk away, right? They can just walk away from a toxic work environment, a toxic boss, an abusive, um, you know, workplace, you know, without okay. having to... The word the word freedom might be a bit too strong. Mm. What I'm suggesting gives you options such that mm. at any time in your life you actually have options. You can mm. choose different paths. Don't be locked into one single path. So for example, Vincent Aoyong asked whether MBA can guarantee you a good job. Uh, no, of course it doesn't, but you have the option to consider taking on the MBA in case you are accepted you have got the option of not having to say, sorry, you are a famous Nobel Prize winner wants to uh, engage me to do a PhD for three years. I simply can't walk away from my home loan and my job. And I can't, I have to pass up this great opportunity to get a PhD with a Nobel Prize winner. Mm, okay, I understand. So I think one of the commenters just now also mentioned like the choice to walk away, the choice to get opportunities and things like that. Okay, very, very valid. Yeah. Thanks so much, Su Yong, for like covering this with us. Okay, with that, right, Su Yong, before we move into QA, everybody, I hope you actually enjoyed this session so far. I see more and more people coming in. So we feel quite encouraged. It's already almost one and a half hours, and we have all like all of you watching us from YouTube and from Facebook, super, super appreciate it. Once again, if you feel you benefited from this content, please share it so that your friends and your family can also benefit as well. With that, right, if you want to keep in touch with Sui Yong, we're going to move into Q&A after this. So if you want to keep in touch with Sui Yong, I highly encourage you to follow his Telegram group. So it's bit.ly slash K-S-Y Tally. So bear in mind uh, for bit.ly links, um, capitals matter. So you can just follow this Telegram group right now. And Sui Yong is actually super active. He just shares like his views on property news, you know, on a daily basis. I think one day you post about two or three times, right? Sui Yong, I see. Because I'm part of that Telegram group as well. Yeah. And Depends on top on of... Depends on my level of laziness. 
<laughs> oh, depends. <laughs> okay, lah. But so far, I see you're quite consistent. Yeah, and I also see that you know you have a YouTube channel. So guys, you can follow K S Y YouTube. Remember, capitals ah, it's very very important because uh for big links, you know, capital uh letters really matter. So follow the capitalization as well. This is a quite interesting YouTube channel because I see Suyong. You actually sometimes go to shopping mall and then you film and then you give your commentaries as well. So for those of you who are interested in REITs, interested in commercial properties, that I think this is also quite a good channel to follow. Also, so guys, please take a photo of this and you know follow. So you're on Telegram or YouTube, whichever is actually more convenient for you.